But happy Mother's Day. I'm going to continue in the track we've been going uh, over the last couple of weeks. We've been talking about the culture inside of the church. And what is it that God would tell us? What's the example of Scripture of what we should look like inside of the church? But before we do, I want to, I want to read that verse that Brother Jep read again in our communion meditation. It's from the book of Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 13. And in that, what has happened is Israel is, is took their, their eyes off their first love being God. And they've been oppressed for that. They've been moved all around. They've, they've been broken apart. And the prophet is speaking to Israel uh, what God has laid on the prophet's heart. And he says here there's a comparison that he makes. He says, As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. He's talking to the church. As, as we understand from the Old Testament into the New Testament, and there's an analogy there that God Himself speaks of His love in comparison to something we would understand, and that is the love of a mother for her child. I want you to think about that, and again, Mother's Happy Mother's Day to you. I'm going to be coming back to you as we run through the Scripture a little bit. And I'm, going, I'm going to go backwards just a little bit, and we talked last week in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Shannon, I'm going backwards. Uh, so in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talked about the, the uh, spiritual gifts that were given, and it compared that, that the body of Christ was just that, a body, that we in the church, each individual member inside of the church, we've all been gifted in unique ways. That God, when we, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we receive from Him some type of spiritual gift. And he goes through in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 talking about the unity of the body, how the hand can't operate without the arm, and how the eye can't, can't operate without the ear, and all of these things. There's a, a unity that's supposed to be in the body of Christ. And then he brings in that we've all been gifted in certain ways. That's from last week. I want to just review with you some things that he said in verse 18. As God has said everything as it pleases him, he puts things together. He gifts people as he wants. You see, as God sees, it is perfect in every way. And he's created the body of Christ to work perfect in every way, and he has gifted us as he sees. Verse 22, he spells out uh, those parts of the body which we don't think are all that important. He throws even more abundance on he does that to show that even when we think we're feeble or we think our part is less, no, God bestows even more honor on those parts because every part of the body is important. He says in verse 25, he does all of this, that there be no schism in the body. Schism is that conflict, that, that uh, the, the rumble strips we run into when things aren't going right. He says in verse 26, when one member suffers, all members suffer, and when one is full of joy, all are full of joy. And then he gets into these particular gifts um, that, that he talks about starting at verse number 27 where he says, now you're the body of Christ, members in particular. And he says he, he gave some uh, first apostles, second prophets, thirdly teachers, miracles and gifts of healing governments. And he goes through all of that and he says at the end of this chapter, but covet earnestly the best gifts and I will show you a more excellent way. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may I speak today what you want spoken. May the preparation be, God, because you have prepared hearts, both of me to speak and for this congregation to receive. And God, what we want to do again is honor you. God, you, you gave us promises in your scripture that your word cannot go out and come back void. So God, speak to us through your word today. May there be power in this message, not the speaker, in your message, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you to think about this. God has put this together of how the church should be, and it is perfect how everything works. If everybody utilized their spiritual gift to the way that God has given them, could you imagine what would take place? Could you imagine if absolutely every member of the church, not just Arthur Christian Church, but God's church universal, did exactly what they've been gifted with, following what God's Word said, could you imagine what would happen? That'd be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? Look, let me ask this. H have you ever done something that didn't quite work out like you had planned? Let me give you all an example, and I'll speak to you mothers as you will, you will get this a little bit better. 
I remember when uh, Melody was pregnant with Hannah, and we're far along now. And uh, I come home, and she's getting the, the nursery. You know, it's a bedroom, but it's now the nursery because the baby's going in it. She's getting that just right. And I come home, and she did not wait on me to put the border up. She is standing in a rocking chair, out of all things. Sounds like a pretty good ladder. Standing in a rocking chair, pregnant, and she's putting border up in the room because it's got to be just perfect. All right? And then the day comes that Hannah comes into the world. We're all excited. You know, everything's great. And we've always already had these showers, and we've got the perfect this, the perfect that. You know, and Hannah is able to come home. So here we are, me, Melody, and Hannah. The family, everybody else is gone. You know, we're getting that bonding time. We've put the sign on the door. Hey, we love you. Thank you for coming, but don't bother us now. You know, all of those things that you do, and that's okay. Hey, that's okay. And we're, we're getting the perfect little bath out because we've got the perfect bath set, you know, that's got mommy approved soap. You can pour it straight in the eyes, you can drink it, doesn't hurt you whatsoever. It is just right, you know. And, and we're testing the water, and you can't stick your finger, you've got to stick your elbow in it. I don't know where that comes from. But anyway, it's too hot, then it's too cold, and then we finally get it just right. And, and we've got all the soaps out. You've got this little nice little, you know, baby cloths that are like this big. What is up with that? Um, but anyway, we got all of this stuff, and it's laid out perfect. And we got this jug that's like a half a gallon. And it's got nice little flowers and pink little stuff on it, you know. And it's got this top on it, and it's just perfect. I got the video camera. <laughs> And there's Hannah laid, and I'm looking, and we're in the mirror, and it's coming in. Everything is just right. And you get that soap that smells like a baby's bottom. You know what I'm talking about. Just, y'all know what I'm talking about. And there's washing that's going on, and there's Hannah just smiling away. <laughs> and then comes what we didn't expect. Melody picks up that container of perfectly warmed water. And she first starts to sprinkle it on Hannah at her feet, you know, to wash the soap off. And the top comes off. <laughs> Hannah nearly drowns. <laughs> the top hits Hannah in the head. <laughs> Hannah screams after she can get a breath. Melody screams. I scream. <laughs> Melody drops the container, boom, right in the head again. You know, <laughs> the only thing that didn't happen was Hannah didn't roll off of the counter into the floor. You know, what we thought would be perfect in every way. You know, it's that first baby, so it's like nobody else has the cleanliness to be able to touch our kids when they're the first kid. You know what I'm talking about. And here we've messed up this perfect thing. You know, we've almost killed our child on the first night home. They don't come with directions. Let me just say that. Things, you, you mothers, you know what I'm talking about. You've got some of your own examples of those perfectly planned things. If I really want, I might probably get in trouble for this one. But if we were to go to those young birthday parties, you know, I mean, you have war in your house that things better be in the proper order because this one-year-old who's never going to remember what it is you're doing, <laughs> you know, you've got a $100 cake or either you have spent 24 hours of putting the right character together on this cake. The kid's just going to smack in it, you know, in what's going on. But we think we got all this together and we want it perfect in every way. And guess what? Does it ever come out perfect? It just doesn't. You know, when we're young, we're crushed when it doesn't work out. And then somewhere in the middle, we start to evaluate and we wonder, have I been a good mother? Have I been a good father? Have I been a good person for that matter? And we certainly see the good and we see things that we wish were better. And then there's a point later in our life where we get to reflect and there's plenty of brokenness, there's plenty of heartache in that reflection, but it's all joy. It's joy in knowing that there was something that made it through whatever your time is with your children, and that thing is love. It's love. I want to talk about that today. You know, sometimes even in the perfect plan, things don't go right. And I want to use this scripture that here is God 
speaking to his church. And to the church, he's saying, this is how I want it done. This is how everything can work together to its prime, of how each member of the body can be gifted and working as I have designed. God's plan is perfect. There's one problem with his plan, and it's by his choosing. God decides to use and to gift imperfect people, and that's us. I, I want you to think about these things. If we were to go back in chapter uh, 12, verse 20, 27, going into 28, we'll see there's apostles. These are people who walked with Jesus. They got to see Jesus. Well, the apostles have now passed. If we were to go a little bit further, prophets and teachers, proclaimers of the good news, you know, sometimes I feel like I can just preach or teach my heart out, and it's like nobody listened, or, it, you know, that connection didn't, just didn't happen. And then I'm reminded not to feel so bad, because uh, in Acts chapter 20, verse 9, there's this thing talking about Paul preaching. And he's preaching, and he's in this place, he's on the third story. And it's hot like it is here, but we don't allow our windows to open because some of y'all would fall out. All right? And this is scripturally you, Acts chapter 20. You need to look this up if you don't know the story. Paul is preaching, and he's preaching for hours, and a guy's sitting in the windowsill on the third story, and he falls asleep and falls out of the window to the ground to his death. All right? So imagine Paul. He's got to stop preaching. He's got to go down three flights of steps. He goes out to this guy who, who pretty much is saying, Paul, you're a born preacher. I fell asleep and fell to my death. You know, and he has to go out and he takes this guy and he calls for God to heal him, bring him back to life. That happens. This poor fellow has to go back and listen to more preaching. <laughs> All right? This is scriptural. Acts chapter 20, you need to look at this. Everything doesn't happen like we think it will. Workers of miracles, you know, sooner or later we can take even Jesus' miracle of Lazarus. He brought Lazarus back from the dead. But you know what? Lazarus' life ended again. There was still death that came. Everything has an ending when we look at things. Gifts of healings, we may heal one now. God may heal someone now, but the healings are temporary. We could look at all of these. You know, I just... I want to bring back again that God's design is perfect in every way. But He chooses to use us, which are imperfect people. You know, that's why Paul says in verse 31, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet I'll show you a more excellent way. He says in the first three verses, the first two, as he goes into talking about love, he says this in chapter 13, Though I speak with the, the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, meaning love, I have become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. This is knowledge and ability. He says, though I've got this knowledge and ability to do things maybe even above what my neighbor has. If I don't have love, then it's just noise. Then he talks about uh, actual doing deeds in verse 3. He says, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profit me nothing. <laughs> you see, even in all the imperfections or the things we think we're perfected in, Paul says, understand this, if you are not grounded in love, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And then he defines what love is. Look at these next verses. Shannon, keep up with me. In verse 4 he starts, Love suffereth long. It does not envy. It does not brag about itself. It is not prideful. It does not behave unseemingly. It is not about itself at all. It's about others. It is not easily provoked to anger. Thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. But love never fails. That's what love is. Long suffering like we can't understand yet. That's love. Love is not as we define it. Love is as God defines it. 
He tells us in 1 John chapter 3, I think verse 9, that He is love. God is love. And we cannot, we cannot love until we understand that and have received His love into our life. But then we get in to verse 8. Paul says, Charity, love never fails, but where there's prophecies, they shall fail. There's a time coming where they just won't matter. Where there's tongues, they're going to cease. Where there's knowledge, it shall vanish away. That knowledge will not matter. And then we get to part of uh, a little piece here in verse 9 and 10 that I, I won't go into for time's sake today. But one of these doctrinally challenging issues that comes up in these two simple verses, it says, For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then when that which is in part shall be done away with. Paul is saying... Here, at the beginning, there's all of these things that God has gifted us with. And He's told us how to be unified in the body of Christ. But there's a time all of those things are going to be taken away. The controversy in verse 9 and 10 is different denominations will, will debate of what of those gifts have or have not been taken away already. It doesn't matter. That's not the purpose of what I want you to see in His Scripture today. What He's saying is... All those things are just things that God has put in His design. But they're all going to go away. There's something that stands, though. And what it is that stands is love. Then he gives us an example, verse 11. He said, When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish ways. You know, um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Towards the end of that, that chapter, Paul tells the church at Corinth, he said, I speak to you as babes because you're not ready for solid food. The analogy that he's saying here, he's saying, when I first saw as a child, that's, that's the perception. How simple life is. For these kids that just sung you a song up here, have they not got it made? I mean, just to sit up here and jump around, I can run off. I mean, we got it. That, that is life. Hey, Mama, I'm hungry. Give me something to eat. <laughs> I want to go watch TV. It's all about them, right? I mean, that's our children. We love it. You got it made when that's the view. And, you know, I can remember my kids saying, I, I can't wait until I'm old enough to get a job. Well, guess what? They don't like that idea now. <laughs> How many of you would like to go back to just, hey, Mommy, it's time to eat. Bring me something to eat. <laughs> but Paul says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish ways. See, there's a brief, and he's starting to point towards a process. It's a sanctification that happens to us in the body of Christ. God has called us together as one inside of the church to be in unified one accord. And to do that, He has strengthened us with gifts from His Holy Spirit that all work together as the hands and the feet, the eyes, the ears, and every body part you can imagine. God has brought all of that together for unification. It says in, in Ephesians chapter 4 in verse 12, it talks about the use of all of these gifts. We come together for the perfecting of the, of the saints, for the, edify, the work of the ministry and the edifying of the body of Christ. And then right after that, he says, until we all come to the unity of faith. You see, that's its purpose inside of the church. But I want you to think this. This is not an excuse. But I want you to think this. God gives us those gifts, and we're imperfect. We're children as babes, hopefully growing to be spiritual adults, utilizing those gifts that He gives us in the body to bring Him honor and glory. But Paul says, no matter your success or failure in this, understand this, that all of this is going to go away, but one thing is going to stand. There's one thing that will be eternal. That is love. Last verse I'll finish on. He says this in verse 13 of chapter 13. And now abideth faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest is love. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, things we can't see. 
one day we won't need faith because we will be present with the Father. Hope. There's hope that God's not leaving me. He's, he's not leaving me by myself. He'll never forsake me. He'll never leave my side. I'm going to be with Him. We have that hope. One day we're going to be with Him. We will not need hope anymore. Those two are going to be gone. But even when we are in God's presence for eternity, love will remain. To our mothers, I've witnessed this over and over and over again. You have a heart that says, there's nothing you would not do for your children. Nothing. You would do anything for them to be safe and to grow up in the fear of the Lord. And in your world, things have not ended up exactly like you thought they would. And that's okay. There's so many joys. All those wonderful times together that you can remember, the joys, the impact that you know is good. Those things are just there for eternity. But I know you good enough to know that you all hang on to just a little bit of what you perceive as failure. Understand this. As long as the heart intent was grounded in love, you can do no wrong. You can do no wrong because love is eternal. God calls the church to a specific mission and purpose. And for us in Bell Arthur, Arthur Christian Church in this community, to continue the purpose to the biggest way that God has designed for us, we have to utilize those gifts that He's given us. It's for the unification of the church. It's for the, the edifying, the building up, for the spreading of the gospel. We've got to use those gifts. And you know what? There's going to be times we fail with that, but that's okay. Our heart intent behind it all has got to be love for God and love for others. And God's going to honor that. And it's amazing to me how God is such a God of order and structure that He has put the family unit together in such a way and put such importance on every piece of the family. And he says, even in that, just as he's talking to the church, there's nothing greater than love. As Kathy comes up and plays our hymn of decision, I don't know what may be on your heart today. I'll just say this as we sing, God's spoken to you in some way that you just want to honor Him, glorify Him, do that. If you need to come forward, let's pray together, we'll do that. If God has spoken to you in some other way, there's something there you just need to release. Would you give it to Him today? His altar is open. And remember, as you look back at life and all the things you think you got right and all those things you think you got wrong, you know what? It's okay. Because we know our heart intent was for the right reason with a heart full of love. And where your brokenness is, understand God is reaching out with His hand and He's full of an eternal love for you. Would you receive that love today? As we stand, as we close.